Welcome to today's episode of the Mindset Mentor Podcast. I'm your host, Rob Dial. If you have not yet done so, hit that subscribe button so that you never miss another podcast this episode. Please give us a rating and review however you listen to us. Uh, we have over a million people listen to us every single week uh, and every single year, every single month, but we have a very small amount of people who have actually given us a rating and review. So if you listen to this all the time, just do me a quick favor, give us a rating and review. The more positive reviews that we get on those platforms, the more those platforms show this organically to people who have never listened to the Mindset Mentor. So it would greatly, greatly help us grow and help other people's lives to be able to actually find this podcast. And I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about two steps to stop stressing and stop worrying. And I'm going to actually tell you, like for me, earlier this week, I was stressed as shit. And because uh, there was a lot of things that were happening, uh, specifically without going into detail, my sales team didn't communicate correctly with the operations team. And there was a big breakdown. It wasn't huge, but it was just this thing where it took a lot of time and energy to fix. And from that I became stressed. And I was like, oh man, what if this doesn't work? What, is, what if this is? This? I started thinking in my head a little bit too much. And I noticed that I was there. People think that because I'm quote unquote, the mindset mentor, like I never deal with stress and I wake up and I'm motivated. And I'm like, let's just take on the day. Like I deal with all of the same shit that everybody else does. But over years, I've just developed tools to get me out of those places, right? Like I get stressed, but I just don't live there. And so if you get stressed or you worry, don't live there. I want to give you some tools to actually get out of it. And today I'm going to give you some of the tools that I used uh, a few days ago to actually get myself out of it and to put out fires and uh, to get myself out of the feeling of stress and overwhelm and worry and all that stuff. This is important. And the reason why this is important, because we only have so much mental energy throughout the day. And I want you to imagine your mental energy, like the, the mental energy of what you spend thinking about everything, good, bad, worrying, happiness, everything as like the battery on your phone. And you wake up in the morning, your phone is plugged in and it's at hundred percent. But imagine that you can't plug your phone back in and you have a limited amount of energy that you can use on your phone every single day. Well, then you're, if you know you have a limited amount of energy, you're going to, you know, it runs out like hundred percent by the end of the day, maybe even earlier based off of how you use it. You're going to start using your energy in your phone smart. Like you're gonna be more smart with it. If it ran out of energy quicker than it, than it does right now, you cannot recharge it. And so that's the way that I like to think of our mental energy. You cannot recharge it. When you wake up, you're at 100%. When you go to bed, you're at 0%. Sometimes you hit 0% by like 4 p.m., right? <laughs> if you've had a crazy day. And so when it's out, it's out. And psychologists have found that the average human in first world, first and second world, spends about two hours per day, two hours per day worrying. That's a lot. If you're only up for 16 hours, that means one eighth of your day. What is that? 12.5%, I think, off the top of my head. 12.5% of your day is spent worrying. That's a lot of mental energy that could be used for something different. And 85%, psychologists have found that 85% of what you worry about never actually happens. 12% of what you worry about does not happen as bad as you think it's going to happen. So it actually turns out better, which means that 97% of what you worry about either does not happen, most of it doesn't happen, or it doesn't happen as bad as you think it's going to happen, which means only 3% of what you worry about ends up being as bad as you thought it was going to be. 3%. One out of 33 things that you worry about ends up being as bad as you think it's going to be. Imagine how much more we could do in our lives if we notice ourselves worrying and stressing because we are going to find ourselves there. No matter who you are, you're going to find yourself. You could be a, a monk that's somewhere out in Nepal and they're going to worry or stress about something at least for a little bit of the day might be 15 minutes might be three minutes I don't know what it is but everybody's going to stress and worry at some point in time throughout the day what we need to do is have tools to be aware of when it happens and when it does happen we know now have tools to be able to get out of it as quick as we possibly can because think if you had those two hours a day almost two hours a day that you spend worrying or stressing or whatever it might be dreaming of all of the amazing stuff that you could do, taking action towards the life that you want, planning out what steps you need to take today and tomorrow to create this big, amazing life. Imagine if you use that mental energy, the 12.5% of your day to creating versus worrying or stressing. Think of how much more you could do. And it's natural for us to worry. 
It's how we survived. It's how it kept, our, it kept our species alive to worry and to stress about certain things, to stay away from sounds that were inside of bushes, to stay away from the rattling, which ended up being a rattlesnake. But as an adult, if you're an adult, if you're listening to this, you're probably an adult. 99% of you are adults. But as an adult, we need to learn how to get ourselves out of worrying and stressing as soon as possible so that we can create, so that we can plan, so that we can dream, so that we can make something more of our life. So let's talk about it. The first thing, I'm gonna give you two different tools, two different secrets, two different fun things that you could do. The first thing I want you to do is just put your life into perspective. Put your worry and your stress into perspective. This is what I did the other day when I was stressing out is I was stressing out about communication between the sales team and the operations team. So what did I do? I put on a video because I just like doing this. I put on a video on YouTube about how small, how small the earth is compared to this vast universe that we're in. Everything. And then I did a whole bunch of research about how small the earth is. Because what I want to do is I want to take my worry and guys, like, think of it this way. If you won't remember it in five years, don't spend more than five minutes stressing or worrying about it. If you will, I will not remember this event that happened a couple days ago in five years. I should not spend more than five minutes worrying about it. It is not worth my time and my mental capacity. But when I look at stuff, and this is something that I do, when I look at stuff that shows me the size of the universe and the size of the earth and the size of this vastness and the, the crazy stuff that happens, I'm like... My problems are not that big. My problems are nothing. My stress, my worry, what I'm freaking out about is nothing. Literally nothing. And so then I did some research for today's episode because I was like, let's do some research and really see how small our problems are. Because if we're being honest, none of that shit actually matters, right? We're floating on a rock through space. The earth spins at a thousand miles an hour and it spins around our sun at 67,000 miles an hour. And that sun is a giant flaming ball of fire that is 1.3 million times the size of the earth that we're on. So if you think about how small we are on the earth, like teeny tiny, teeny, 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 tiny, little, little speck on the earth, right? Can't even see it when you're above it in a satellite. You can't see yourself when you're in a, looking down in a satellite. You think about how small I am. I'll give myself an example, how small you are how small we are on this earth. And this earth, to get to the size of this ball that, of fire that we're going around, we're spinning 1,000 miles an hour. We're spinning around the sun at 67,000 miles an hour. And the sun is 1.3 million times larger than the earth that we're on. So I'm, I'm going to think about how small I am compared to the earth. I'm going to think about the earth is 1.3 million times smaller than the sun. And our sun is a teeny, teeny, tiny star compared to others. And the largest star that we know of, which I'm sure somewhere off in the distance that we've never seen before and may never see, is something even bigger than this star. But the biggest star that we know about is 4,900 light years away, which means that if we were able to be able to create a rocket and shoot it from Earth to this star, this biggest star that we know about, it would take 4,900 years traveling at the speed of light to get there. We would never even get there. We wouldn't. We'd have to have our our great, 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 great times 400 grandchildren end up there. And if that star system, if that if that star itself, this is wild. If that star itself that is the biggest one that we know about was placed where our earth is, it would fill up our entire solar system beyond the orbit of Saturn. So let me see if I can remember my planets, right? So you're talking about our sun. If it was put where our sun is, that star that is that, is that much bigger. If it, if it was, it's just crazy for me to think about. And I'm, as I'm thinking about it, I'm like, none of the shit I worry about. I'm literally thinking in my head, like none of this shit matters. If it was put, that star, the biggest star that we know about was put where, where, right where our sun is. It would cover our sun. It would cover the orbit of Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. The only thing it wouldn't touch is Uranus, um, so, <laughs> uh, because I guess Pluto is not a uh, Pluto is not a, a real planet anymore. It was when I was a kid. Jup so Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, all of those, it would be bigger than all of the orbits of all of them. That's how big it is. And our sun that we have right now is going to burn out in 7.5 billion years. 
which means that it, when it burns out, everything, our solar system will die. And there will be no record that we ever existed. And I'm sitting here stressing about improper communication between my sales team and my operations team. That doesn't make any sense, right? And, and you can put your life into perspective and be like, man, this, this thing I'm worrying about that seems so big to me is actually so small. It really doesn't matter. So for me, that's one of the things that I love to do is to put my life into perspective in that way of like, none of these things matter. Rob, just let go of it. You'll be fine, right? So, so that's one thing, one way that I like to put my life into perspective. The other way I like to put my life into perspective is how great my life actually is. No matter where your life is, it could be amazing, it could be okay, it could be terrible. Your life is still amazing. Like if you're, you know, out of all of the hundreds of thousands of people that are gonna hear this podcast episode, if you were to be able to go back to like the 1100s, your life right now, if you happen to be out of the hundreds of thousands of people have the worst life out of everybody who listens to this podcast in this very moment, your life would be better than a king in the 1100s. There are billions of people on this planet that would trade, er, trade spots with you right now if they had the option to be able to have your life. And so when you can put your life into perspective, you realize what we worry about really isn't that big of a deal. And we can move past it. So think about the thing that's been stressing you out lately, the thing that's been, that you've been worrying about lately. Do you feel a little bit more like, oh yeah, yeah, it's really, it's really not that big of a deal. So that's the first thing. That's the first thing I like to do is put my life into perspective and remind myself how small my worry actually is and how amazing my life actually is. And the second thing I like to do is this, is to put it all on paper. You know, there's a phrase, when you're in your head, you're dead. I like to think of like Top Gun, if you saw the new Top Gun, Maverick, he says, don't think, just do. Like, stop thinking. We're thinking too much. We're thinking, all of our stress, all of our worry, all of our overwhelm comes from us thinking too much about stuff versus executing on what we actually need to execute on. Imagine like if I gave you a math problem and I said, hey, I'm going to give you $10,000 if you can give me the right answer to this problem, but you cannot use a calculator. Can't use the internet, can't use a calculator. It's 1,700, 1,325 times seven. I want you to figure out 1,325. Some of you guys, like a very small percentage of you can figure it out in your head. I could figure it out in my head, but I would also want something to confirm it. What would you, if I said, hey, $10,000, and I'm gonna, if you can just figure out 1,325 times seven, what would you ask me for? Oh yeah, you would, don't you? Hey, can I have a piece of paper? Is it, a, I know I can't use a calculator, can I use a piece of paper? Why would you ask me for that piece of paper? because most people can't do it in a, a complex problem like that. And that's, that's kind of simple. It's not very complex. There's much more complex math problems, but most people can't figure it out in their head and that's fine, but it's easier to do on paper, right? 1,325 times seven, we could eventually go through and do, okay, I haven't done you know, this, <laughs> this on a piece of paper and actually done this in a really long time, but we could probably figure out, okay, three times five is 35. You got to put the five down below. You got to take the three, you got to put it above. And then you've got to take, you know, two times seven, that's 14 plus the three is above. That's a seven. So it's a 75 down below total. And we could figure it out. We could actually write it down and start to figure it out. Couldn't we? We could, we could, it's easier to do on paper. Math is very straightforward. It's not complex. But think about how complex some of the things in your life are that you're trying to figure out in your head. How complex taking a situation that's happening in your business or it's happening in your life or happening with your children or your relationship, how complex it is when we have different people and we have different emotions, we have different circumstances. Think about how complex that is. It's a lot. And we try to figure it out in our head. That doesn't make any sense. If we're going to try to write down a math problem that's really not that hard of a math problem, we're going to try to figure that out in our heads. Why would we uh, uh, try to figure it out on paper, excuse me? And we're going to try to figure that out on paper. And we're going to try to figure out the really complex parts of our life in our head. No wonder why we're stressed out because that shit is not easy to do. But when we write it down, okay, this is happening right now in the business. This is happening right now in my relation. This is happening right now. And we can start to journal through and write it. Even if so many people are afraid of journaling because they're afraid someone that they, they love is going to find it or you know they're going to be caught and they're going to see their deepest, darkest secrets inside of their head. If it's really that big of a deal and you're so worried about it, I always tell people, if you're so worried about people finding your journal, just burn it when you're done. 
like not the entire thing, just rip out the piece of paper, burn it, rip out the piece of paper, shred it, throw it away, whatever it is you have to do so that it's never found. But at least you can take that complex problem, figure it out on paper and go, oh yeah, I think I've got the solution. And so it's really not that hard to get ourselves out of worry and stress because you want to get yourself out of your head and actually start to figure it out. So the, the two things that I recommend that you do is number one, put your life into perspective. You can think about how bad some people's lives are on this earth and how blessed you are to be able to have the life that you have. And number two, you can think about how small your problems are compared to the vastness of this crazy universe that we have. And then the second thing that you can do after that is you can take the complex problem that you're stressing about, that you're worrying about, because a lot of times you're stressing and worrying it because you can't find the solution. You can't find the answer. We can't find the answer because it's really hard and complex to figure out in your head. And you put it down on a piece of paper, I'll tell you like 99% of your stress and worry is going to be like, oh, okay, I think I know what I should do. Now, it might not be easy steps you need to take next, but at least you know what you need to do and you can start moving forward versus feeling paralyzed because that's where paralysis by analysis comes from. And so that's what I got for you for today's episode. Your worry and stress, let's let it go. Let's work through it. It's something that's solvable. Everything is solvable with time and with perspective and with energy. So that's what I want you guys to do. Put your life into perspective and then put it all on paper. So that's what I got for you for today's episode. If you love this episode, please share it on your Instagram stories and tag me in it, Rob Dial Jr., R-O-B-D-I-A-L-J-R. Also, you may have heard me talk about the new Instagram that we started specifically for this podcast is blowing up like crazy. Uh, we went from like 20 to over 50 something thousand followers in like less than 30 days. And so we're putting up a bunch of really great content. A lot of it's starting to go viral. And so if you want to follow us on there, it is the Mindset Mentor Podcast. Once again, the Mindset Mentor Podcast. Follow us on there. And I'm going to leave it the same way I leave you every single episode. Make it your mission to make somebody else's day better. I appreciate you. And I hope that you have an amazing day.